on the 8th of October back in 1885, National Park Ranger David Nemeth was exploring the area of Wolf Point within Alaska's Glacier National Park when he came across a difficult to explain sight. For added context, Glacier National Park is considered to be one of the most remote camping and wilderness exploration areas of the United States. The location forms from a series of small inlets that expand into wider inlets on the Alaskan shores connecting with the Pacific Ocean, and so allow greater movement of travel throughout the region by boat. As the National Park Ranger David Minniff and his partner, who remains unnamed, were patrolling the shores of Wolf Point, they claimed to have noticed what they described as a small tent residing next to the high tide line of the shore. Believing that someone had decided to set up their small camp right next to the edge of the water, the two National Park Rangers quickly parked up their boats on the shore and went to investigate further, hoping to warn the Lone Ranger about the dangers of the sudden rising tide and the fear of losing any of their survival equipment. Almost immediately the two men began to realise that something far more peculiar had occurred, as they noticed that many of the more important pieces of equipment appeared to have been scattered throughout the area, as if the person was still setting up their camp and had momentarily dropped their equipment. Outside the tent, the National Park Rangers discovered an untouched sleeping bag and a foam pad alongside several tools. Within the tent appeared to have been one month's worth of food, a couple of flashlights, several survival books on the Glacier National Park, pamphlets concerning safety and survival strategies, soap, several packs of cigarettes, a bottle of vitamin C supplements, a new compass and many other items typically used for camping. However, all of the items appear to have been either untouched or still in their packaging. After waiting a while and calling out for the camper, the two National Park Rangers realised they would be unable to conduct a search immediately, and so decided to return to their boat and outpost to regroup and plan a better strategy. A Freedom of Information Act request that would later reveal the Park Rangers' written investigation on the matter claimed that the site was so bizarre, it caused them to worry about the condition of the camper but were unable to find any evidence of a struggle or animal attack, and so were forced to postpone the search for another 24 hours. The following day of first light, the two park rangers returned to the site, accompanied by an additional two other park rangers, and discovered the campsite in the exact same condition as the previous day. Now believing that the camper responsible for the campsite was missing or in trouble, the National Park Rangers began their search and rescue, and began to investigate who could be missing. It was around this time that the Rangers realised that the campsite appeared to have belonged to a 36-year-old male, who went by the name of Kevin Robert O'Keefe, and had arrived in the area on the 22nd of September, less than 20 days prior to their first contact with the campsite, and had originally planned to have been in the area for a full month. Retracing Kevin Robert O'Keefe's steps, the rangers discovered that O'Keefe had travelled from his home in Sacramento, California, and arrived in Alaska on the 20th of September. On the day of his arrival, he would immediately take a small flight to the Glacial Park headquarters to be trained by the ranger on proper survival techniques, and what to do for specific situations one will most likely find themselves in out in the National Park. Interestingly, it was at the Glacial Park headquarters that the majority of the information of Kevin O'Keefe was gathered, and this was weeks prior to his disappearance. During his training, it had been known that Kevin O'Keefe was an avid outdoorsman, with several thousand hours of experience when it came to camping, hiking and survival studies. His supplies were able to last him an entire month, with several equipment redundancies in the event that any of his tours had failed. On the 20th and 21st of September, Kevin O'Keefe would enrol in and attend several classes hosted by the Glacier National Park headquarters on surviving in the wild. On the 22nd of September, Kevin O'Keefe would last be seen after he would take a small float plane slightly north of Wolf Point. 
according to the pilot and several rangers, it was believed that Kevin O'Keefe was travelling alone. Despite the several dozen man-hours spent investigating Kevin O'Keefe's history, experience and his time spent in Glacier National Park, the rangers became increasingly confused as to why and how Kevin O'Keefe would suddenly vanish. It was around this time that new information surrounding the campsite appeared, and began to complicate their search even further. According to the National Park Service reports, on the 10th of October, a team of rangers returned to the area with the assistance of an overhead Cessna 206 to perform a more thorough search for Kevin from an aerial view. During their search, the team of rangers discovered a pair of boons, and Kevin's hat located roughly half a mile away from his campsite. The pair of shoes and hat would be found inside a small ravine, and appear to have been purposefully placed there, as no other sign of Kevin was found, and the shoes appear to have been untied and thrown down into the gully. Seven days after the aerial search, on the 17th of October back in 1985, the investigation into the disappearance of Kevin O'Keefe was slowly ended. Hoping to gather more information, the Anchorage Daily newspaper would publish an article on the 17th of October, with the cooperation of the Glacier Park Rangers, that provided details and speculation on O'Keefe's disappearance. The Rangers would later provide the statement that they saw no bear tracks, or animal tracks of any kind anywhere in the area surrounding Kevin's camp. Even more peculiar, the rangers remarked that the situation seemed increasingly odd, as they discovered or saw almost no wildlife of any kind in the region. To this day, the search for Kevin O'Keefe is still considered an open case. No evidence of a struggle, animal attack or accident was discovered, so what do you make of this mysterious disappearance? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below, and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.